Hi everyone, I wanted to make a bit of a video on some SGI hardware that I have. I'm a bit of a collector of old computer gear, a bit of a retro nerd I would say. Um, and I've been collecting SGI gear for a while just because it's uh, a bit different. Uh, it was very expensive back in the day and uh, it's a Unix-based operating system, popular in the 80s and sort of early mid 90s for doing sort of 3D graphics and and rendering stuff and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I was uh, an old school friend's dad had a collection back when I was at at high school, and he gave me a an indie and and later on an O2, and yeah, I've always quite liked them. Um, so. I want to do a sort of a, like an introduction to low-end SGI gear um, and maybe try and do some tips on hardware that uh, yeah, it would be good to, to get started with. Um, so in this video I have a very rough idea of what I want to cover but basically I want to cover uh, this which is the um, SGI Indie. Um, I would like to cover uh, the O2s, which are, I have a couple here, um, got them all in an Excel spreadsheet, so um, the O2, and uh, at the end I would like to show you my big device, uh, the Octane, which is uh, my best, sort of fastest device. Um, but I want to start off with uh, the Indie. Um, honestly, I think it's my favourite sort of device for low-end SGI gear um, because they're cheap and quite reliable and uh, really retro gear these days is just for playing around with the operating system and you can't really do anything productive with them so the Indies really do uh, you know, work quite well for that. Um, I have a little bit of a, uh, a, a, a list of things I wanted to cover. Um, so I suppose we'll start with the Indy. So basically the Indy, there are three main processors you can get in them. Um, the R4400, the R4600 and the R5000. Um, they each have sort of benefits and limitations. Um, Anyway, this particular Indy is a R4600, uh, and this is kind of like the minimum SGI I'd recommend uh, for people to purchase if uh, they were yeah wanting to get into into it. Uh, so this particular one is a very stock standard. Uh, it's an R4600. It's a 133 megahertz, um, and it's the SC version, which basically means that it has uh, L2 cache, which makes it much quicker. Uh, I believe this one has 96 meg of memory. It's just standard 72 pin uh, RAM, PC RAM that you can use. That's cool. Uh, it has the very base 8-bit uh, graphics and just a single SCSI hard drive. Uh, this particular model has the newer Sony uh, power supply which is quieter and from what people say is more reliable um, I've got a few of the older ones as well and they seem to work fine they just are a bit noisier um, so yeah I mean this is the sort of the basics of it I mean this is a, a very you know old kind of system it's a early mid 90s so yeah, it's you know, pretty old these days but um, You've got your video, which is an interesting connector. Uh, you've got all your audio. Uh, it does some S video. Uh, this is a slot for a sort of proprietary camera, very low quality on, based on these days, but you know, it was pretty cool back in the time. Uh, 10 meg Ethernet, uh, PS2 ports, uh, some SCSI, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, so this particular one has got a yeah, 96 meg RAM. 133 MHz CPU, 8-bit graphics. This would be fine for IREX, which is the operating system, uh, 5.3, or you can run 
6.5 if you really want to, but it will be a bit slower. Um, so, it's been a while since I've turned this particular machine on. I, I scored quite a lot of SGI gear, um, and as you can see, I have a lot of indies, um, and yes, more and more, and I have quite a few O2s, some couple of Indigos, which I'm not going to cover because they're not running at the moment. Another O2, a couple more O2s, some Max because why not, uh, uh, and a few other Max, and uh, yes, quite a fair bit of gear, really. Um, so uh, I wanted to power this on. So I have a nice uh, SGI monitor here. Um, now what I need to do is hook it up. Um, the Indy has this, I don't even remember the 13W3 connector or something, which is a bit interesting. You can um, get adapters to convert it. Uh, sorry about this. Pop that in. Um, uh, yes, the O2s, which are basically the next, like the Indy 2 in a way, they're like the next generation. They do have VGA, so that's nice, but you need something called Sync on Green to make the display look any good. Uh, plug that in, um, plug in the keyboard and mouse. You really need the SGI, well, a, a three button mouse because the OS uses uh, some interesting stuff. Now, um, Network would be good, but I think we will just start with that. Screen is on. Beer in hand. So, the nice, cool thing about the SGIs is they all have a very cool startup chime. Now, this one hasn't been on for a while, so let's see if it actually works. Woo! Here it's a hard drive spinning up. Cool. I don't remember if this is running 5.3 or 6.5. Um, 6.5. Cool. Honestly, not much difference for the interface. I think you can run some newer uh, software on 6.5, but really not a big, not a big difference. Um, some of the issues with these is that the uh, I think this chip goes, the battery in it goes, so it can lose the, the MAC address. Um, so that can be an issue. Um, hard drives I get dead hard drives quite often, unfortunately. Uh, you can get. Uh, adapters uh, like this uh, to convert it to a newer SCSI standard um, and that can be useful um, okay it's just uh, starting up so yes I mean this system would have been you know popular in like 96 or something or probably even earlier um, and these were really workstations they weren't you really didn't do much rendering or anything like that on them. They don't have any texture memory, so they can only really do wire frame 3D. So fairly basic. Um, but considering the age of the machine, the operating system is really very good. Um, obviously, you can't do anything productive, in my opinion, on these today. You can play MP3s if you really wanted to, or have like a basic shell or something like that, but definitely no web browsing. Uh, well, text only web browsing, no JavaScript. Um, so, yeah, this one is a, as I said, the 133 megahertz one. Um, yeah, it's a bit slow to boot, but uh, once it's booted, um, it should all be pretty good. Um, so this is the little command to run to show you the specs. Of it, uh, so yes, yeah, 96 meg RAM, L2 cache, R600. Yeah, sounds pretty cool. Um, so basically, IRX is the, basically the big difference of IRX versus any other 
system is um, the way the windowing works. So if I just open, so I, literally I've only just booted this, I haven't used Irix for probably six months now. Um, basically wherever the mouse is, see how the uh, top changes? Whatever your uh, mouse is hovered over means it's the window that's actually active. So even though um, the console is in the background, um, the mouse is over it, I can type. Whereas if I move the mouse over to the front window, it then stops typing on the console and then into the actual uh, sort of directory viewer. So um, that is really cool. Um, and then you can sort of minimize the sort of all your, your running applications. Yeah. So look, honestly, the, the, these machines are not quick. I mean, the iPhone 1 has probably got faster CPU and, and more memory than this does. But you can do some cool stuff. Now, I wonder if this has the demos. The demos is like the most important thing for an, an indie. Um, yes, it does have some, some demos, which is cool. Let's see. Uh, not the one I wanted. I'm going to quit. Just wanted to this particular one actually has some textures, so it will work much better on the O2, I believe. Although it's actually working better than I remember. Um, I thought it was some wireframe um, power flip is the yeah. So you can do some. Okay, right, so this is really slow. As you can see, the texturing. Let me just turn on the performance. So this is so the performance you get out of texturing. Um, on an indie, pretty, pretty slow. Uh, can I show the frames for a second? No. So, but you can sort of turn it around and rotate it and stuff like that. Um, if you flick it to wireframe, oh, here we go, we do actually get frames a second. I might just, so yeah, two frames a second. Awesome. So if we go to wireframe, way quicker. What are we doing? Yeah, 30 frames a second. And then you can, you know, you can do some pretty good things. So, uh, and you can do some pretty cool stuff. That's pretty quick. So, uh, you know, the operating system is really quite responsive. For a 133 megahertz system. Um, get some stuff happening. No, I don't know. Doom, I don't know if Doom, how well Doom runs on it. Oh, I don't think I actually... Do I have Doom on here? No. Oh, no. So we're still getting 20 frames. And you've got some Doom going as well. So, you know, that's pretty cool. So for, a, for such an old machine, you can... It's surprisingly good, and that's why I really think the Indie is a perfectly suitable machine if you're just want to get into uh, SGI gear on the cheap, just to play with the operating system and get a bit of a feel for it. Um, you know, you can hook it up to the network, you can do some file transfers, do some MP3s. The actual sound quality of these devices is really very good, um, so you can hook up an external uh, amp if you wanted to. There's some cool stuff. Um, that's probably all I'll show for now. I wanted to go over um, some of the other hardware I've got, some of the faster um, indies. Um, but this is a, a, an overview of basically the, the sort of most basic indie that I'd recommend. Um, you don't need 96 meg RAM, you can go 64 meg. Really wouldn't go any lower than that though. Um, operating system is an interesting one. The install process is complicated. Uh, so get one that has it sort of all working. And here's my dog. Hey, Axel. Cool. All right. Um, that, I think, is all for now.